Well, hello everyone and welcome to Connect Groups. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a moment and recap the message from Sunday so that you have plenty of time to discuss this as a group. Now, this past Sunday's message is one that was very practical, but it was also very convicting, and that was the purpose of it. Throughout this entire series, we wanted to give you truth of the scriptures, but also give it to you in a practical way so that you can apply it to your lives. Uh, this is a value of mine. I think if I give you information that's challenging without practical steps, I have done you a disservice instead of giving you a service. And so what we looked at this past week is the truth that how we prioritize things. So we looked at it in a very practical level, that we have to create an order of what matters most. We have to give each of those priorities authority to trump whatever falls below it. And then we have to recognize that each of those priorities demands something differently. So in my list, my number one priority is my relationship with God. My second one is my spouse, which you know is Mary. Then it's my children, and then it's my ministry, and then there's some things that follow after that. So in that, all of those are critically important to my life. They all have value, but in order for them to be healthy, they have to fall in that order. God has to be number one. Otherwise, I will not be a good husband. Then comes Mary, and Mary has to be my priority. Otherwise, I will not be a good pastor. I will not be a good father. Then comes my children. Again, if I'm not focusing on my family, I will not be good in my ministry. And then comes my ministry. And in each one of those, they demand something differently. And when they demand it, the one who's above, they trump everything else. So they get my priority. Once they are satisfied, I move on to the next one. And so what we looked at is this challenging thought. If we're going to do this in our lives, then here's the question. What is the cost? And this is the pivotal moment in all of our lives as Christians, is when we come to the place where we actually count the cost. See, when we first feel the draw toward God, there's a part of us that I think just feels the emotional side of it. There, God draws us. There's something exciting about it. There's something comforting and loving about it, and we're drawn in. But the truth is, is beyond those emotions and those feelings is a very difficult mental, physical exercise where we have to walk through steps that are not comfortable to us. And this is why Jesus just kind of cut through all of that. When the large crowds were following him, he turned to them, and it was almost like he was trying to talk them out of it. He was saying, you need to stop, think about this, and count the costs and decide, do you really want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? And so what we looked at, what does it practically mean in order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? What is that cost? So what will it cost you to make him the priority of your life? And so we looked at the three topics that we've been looking at throughout this series so far. We looked at our finances, we looked at our time, we looked at our energy. These are the three, three things that control us and are of mo the most value to us. And so when we look at it, here's what Jesus said, I want you to make me a priority in your finances. And, and we went down, we broke that down. He, he demands a percentage, he wants you to give first, he wants you to do so generously and joyfully. This is what God has called us to do. So the question for us is not, is this the biblical truth, because it is clearly communicated in Scripture. The question is, am I willing to do that? When I look at my finances, would it be obvious that God is the priority in my finances? You need to hear me. Not a priority, one of many, but the priority in my finances. Am I doing for Him what He has demanded? God never said that you had to give the most money to Him. That's what's amazing about Him. He's so generous. But what he did say is, I want the first, I want the 10%, but then I want you to go above and beyond that in generosity and do it joyfully. So that's the first one, prioritize God in the money. Here's the second one. He wants us to pursue him with our energy. There's that awesome scripture in Mark where he says, where they come to him, Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And he goes, I'll tell you, the most important commandment is to love God. And then he lists with what? With your heart, with your mind, with your soul, with your body. What he's saying is, I want you to love me with all that is in you. So we looked at that. What does it mean in your heart? That's the emotional side, connecting to God relationally. Then we looked at the spiritual, where he says uh, your soul or your spirit. This is the spiritual side, experiencing the presence of God. We looked at the, the mind, which is the mental side, learning about God, studying his word, gaining wisdom and knowledge. And then lastly, the physical side, our, our bodies, responding, walking in obedience, volunteering, doing the work that God has called us to do. So again, we go back and say, when we look at our lives, do we prioritize God in those four areas? Then lastly, we looked at our time. 
And we looked at a passage from Ephesians where he talked us, told us to be wise because we have to evaluate how we are spending our time. And the question we go back to is, as we look at our time, is God the priority? What time do we give to Him? Let's just be honest. Many of us, it is the bare leftovers that we give to God. We might make Sunday a priority, but during our days, everything else that comes to us demands our attention, and we quickly push God aside. And so we're being challenged. Are we making, a God, making God a priority, the priority in our lives? So as you discuss this very difficult topic, here's my guess. Many of you are going to say, man, I'm 0 for 3. I'm struggling. The point of this message was not to make anyone feel bad to condemn anyone. There is zero value in that. The point of this message is to hold up a mirror and challenge us. Why? Because of what this series is founded on. The wise or the prudent, they see danger and they hide from it, but the, the simple, they see it and they go on for it and they suffer for it. We want to be wise. We want to say, okay, let's look at our lives, let's evaluate it, let's be open and honest, and then let's make some action steps to get to the place that God has called us. So as you discuss this, be very open and honest, be very real with each other, encourage each other, allow your corporate wisdom to encourage one another, and then I would ask you to pray for each other because this is a, uh, an important week for us as we take steps in faith. I'm so proud of you. I love you. Can't wait to see you Sunday.